Motivational Summaries presents to you the audiobook, Trust and Inspire, How Truly Great Leaders Unleash Greatness in Others. The traditional command dash and control leadership style was that there was a job to be done, and the leader's responsibility was to leverage people and resources to accomplish the task at hand. Did this leadership style really work all that well? Probably not most of the time. The world has changed and moved on. Thanks to various emerging forces, old-school command dash and control techniques have been superseded by a better way to lead, trust dash and inspire. Today's most effective leaders don't try and bulldoze people to do their work. Instead, leaders today achieve far more by inspiring and empowering their people, and then trusting them to tap into their innate talents and potential. This approach produces far better performance and is, in fact, a new and better way to lead. Forget about trying to command dash and control. Trust dash and inspire your way forward. Part 1 of 4. The Future of Leadership The world has changed and so has the nature of work, the workplace and the makeup of the workforce. Yet for decades, Command and control has been patched and propped to make do as a leadership style. Incremental improvements will no longer work. It's time for a new style of business leadership. Peter Drucker said, quote, In a few hundred years, when the history of our time is written from a long-term perspective, it is likely that the most important event these historians will see is not technology, not internet, not e-commerce. It is an unprecedented change in the human condition. For the first time, literally, substantial and rapidly growing numbers of people have choices. For the first time, they will have to manage themselves, and society is totally unprepared for it. End quote. There's no question, today's workplace is different. The world has changed permanently, as the result of five emerging forces which are presently making themselves felt. One, technology is changing the world in some extraordinary ways. Disruptive technologies are now occurring in all areas, especially the biosciences, artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, automation, digitization, nanotechnology, 3D printing, the Internet of Things, and so on. These changes are converging and blending to generate what commentators are calling the Fourth Industrial Revolution. 2. The nature of work itself is changing. More and more jobs are becoming knowledge-based or service-based. Today's employees are far more likely to do work that requires them to think and apply knowledge than they are to do repetitive physical tasks. Work is also becoming increasingly collaborative and team-structured. 3. The workplace is changing as well. Working from home or from anywhere is fast becoming the norm. This was true even before the global COVID-19 pandemic accelerated this trend quite dramatically. People working in virtual teams, in turn, has quite an impact on workplace cultures. 4. The nature of the workforce is changing. It's now more diverse than ever before. Multiple generations now typically work alongside each other and what people want from work is changing as a result. Workers want to know their contribution is valued rather than merely drawing a paycheck. 5. The nature of choice has changed in that consumers today have thousands of options at the click of a button for almost everything. People have far greater options to work for companies that are located other than where they live. Therefore, leaders need to create the kind of culture which will attract and inspire the best people. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, The five emerging forces show that we need to change the way we lead if we hope to stay relevant. Mark Benioff, founder of Salesforce, described the future as a work-anywhere-live-anywhere environment, remarking how we're in the future already. This is true for those working within organizations but also freelance or on their own. People can work remotely and live nomadically. This new way of working and living requires a new way of leading. 
To succeed in the war for talent, we must stay current, remain relevant, and become intentionally flexible, not just with technology, but especially with the shifting needs and expectations of our people. Pure and simple, what has worked in the past won't necessarily work in the future. That's especially true of leadership styles. Command and control has reached its natural use-by date. To be an effective boss today, you're going to need to adopt a new way of leading. Command and control is now being eclipsed by the trust and inspire leadership style, and the advantages of this new leadership style will become even more pronounced in the future. The perfect example of the impact of trust and inspire leadership is Microsoft. In 2014, Satya Nadeya succeeded Steve Ballmer as CEO. Microsoft's market valuation at that time was around $300 billion, and most people believed the company's best days were behind it. Microsoft was widely considered to be fading towards irrelevance. Nadea came in and immediately started applying a trust and inspire leadership style. With no swagger or hubris, he modeled humility, empathy, authenticity, personal growth, creativity, collaboration, and more. As a result, Nadea managed to change Microsoft's cutthroat culture and replaced it with a growth-oriented culture. Microsoft once again became perceived as a relevant and exciting place to work. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, The results speak for themselves. When Nadea became CEO, Microsoft's market value was around $300 billion. It now exceeds $2 trillion, the second company in history to pull off that high evaluation. It was a turnaround few would have believed possible. Considered a has-been story just a few years ago, Microsoft became the world's cloud powerhouse. It was nothing short of a grand reinvention, and at its roots, that was fundamentally due to the inspiring leadership style of their new leader, a style that unleashed people's potential and that enabled everything else. End quote. This is a summary of Trust and Inspire. Part 2 of 4. Becoming a Trust and Inspire Leader To change from command and control to a trust and inspire leadership style, start by looking at your paradigms about people in leadership. Once you do that, start viewing leadership as a stewardship. Specifically, there are three stewardships that you need to be good at to excel as a trust and inspire leader. 1. Modeling 2. Trusting 3. Inspiring The fundamental beliefs of a trust and inspire leader are based on timeless and powerful principles such as I believe people have greatness inside them. My job is to unleash their potential, not control them. I believe people are whole people. My job is to inspire and help, not merely motivate them. I believe there is enough for everyone. My job as a leader is to elevate caring above competing. I believe leadership is a stewardship. My job is to help people put service above self-interest. I believe influence is created from inside out. My job as a leader is to go first and model success. Trust and inspire leaders aim to unleash the greatness people innately have inside them. They acknowledge their people's worth, ability, and potential. Trust and inspire leaders recognize people have multiple layers and therefore treat them as whole individuals. They realize when people come to work, they bring their whole selves, body, heart, mind, and spirit. These kinds of leaders inspire and encourage people to have a personal cause and to find fulfillment. They look to ignite the fires within. Trust and inspire leaders have an abundance mindset. They elevate caring and sharing above competing. Abundance means there is no need for unhealthy competition and contention, because there's enough for everyone. Therefore, someone else's success doesn't diminish anyone else's opportunities. Trust and inspire leaders put service above self-interest. They see leadership as a stewardship, as an opportunity to serve others. They commit their time, talents, resources, and everything else 
to serving and helping their people excel. Trust and inspire leaders know enduring influence is always built from the inside out, and therefore they go first. They lead from the front and start with themselves. They walk the talk and model the behavior they want others to exhibit. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, The cumulative effect of these beliefs creates a trust and inspire leadership mindset, an expansive lens through which we view the world. Our paradigm matters enormously because it is difficult to act with integrity outside whatever paradigm we have. As we internalize these beliefs and act on them, we will find the strength, indeed, the humility and courage we need to become trust and inspire leaders. Our actions will be guided by these beliefs. And in order to live with integrity and manifest our authenticity, we cannot act in ways that betray our beliefs. End quote. The trust and inspire framework consists of three stewardships that work together and build off of each other. One, modeling. Two, trusting. Three, inspiring. Albert Schweitzer said, quote, Example is not the main thing in influencing others. It's the only thing. End quote. To be a trust and inspire leader, you have to model the attributes you want everyone else to have. That way, people can learn from you simply by being around you. Modeling is the source of your credibility as a leader. As you continue to display your competence, others will build their confidence in your leadership. Barry Relaford, leadership development expert, said, quote, Leadership is not a popularity contest. It is a credibility contest. End quote. When you personally model the right behaviors, you not only have more credibility, but you also have moral authority to lead out. When you go first, you inspire people to follow your lead. Real influence comes from who you are, not just your title. The Sunda Duckett, CEO of TIAA, said, quote, I rent my title. I own my character. End quote. While there are many attributes leaders can model, those with the greatest potential impact are humility and courage, two foundational virtues. A humble person is more concerned with what's right than they are about being right. They are prepared to act on great ideas no matter who suggested them. Often, it takes courage to have humility, but until you have the courage to do the right thing, whether you get the recognition or not, nothing good will happen. Humility bolstered by courage is powerful. Authenticity and vulnerability. Two attractive virtues. Authenticity means real and unblemished, and people are always drawn to it. When your reality matches your words, you have integrity. Vulnerability is the gateway to authenticity. When you open yourself up for others to see who you really are, that transparency creates an intimacy that is alluring. Trust and inspire leaders are vulnerable by being their authentic selves. Empathy and performance. Two dynamic virtues. Empathy is understanding another person's thoughts, feelings, experiences, and point of view. It's the capacity to walk in their shoes. When others sense your empathy, it can lift their own performance levels. Results always matter, and performance will directly impact your credibility as a leader. To really model as a leader, you've got to deliver. Without performance, people won't trust you or ever follow you. Francis Hesselbein, former CEO of the Girl Scouts, said, quote, Leadership is a matter of how to be, not how to do. End quote. Cheryl Batchelder, CEO of Popeyes, said, quote, Leadership is not about your ambition. It is about bringing out the ambitions of your team. The leader must have both the courage to take the people to a daring destination and the humility to selflessly serve others on the journey. End quote. Three Stewardships of Trust and Inspire 2. Trusting Trusting is how you lead. If you have two people working together who are both trustworthy, but there is no trust between them, nothing much will happen. 
As soon as a bond of trust develops, human potential can be unleashed and performance will skyrocket. Fortunately, trust is a competency. It's an actual skill, which means it can be improved over time. Growing and enhancing trust is a three-step process. 1. Clarify expectations. 2. Practice accountability. 3. Grow your people. 1. Always clarify expectations right up front, so people know exactly what they will be responsible for. When you articulate your expectations, you create a shared vision and mutual agreement about what is to be done. If you do this well at the beginning, you can avoid potential headaches and heartaches later on. Mutually agreed upon expectations are also powerful contributors to trust. Clarifying expectations at the start sets everyone up to win. 2. Practice accountability, which follows on from clear expectations. Savvy, trust, and inspire leaders will hold themselves accountable to set a good example, and then hold others accountable. You can't sustain and ultimately grow trust without periodic sessions of accountability. 3. Grow your people, which is the overarching priority and responsibility for any trust and inspire leader. Remember, you want to grow your people, not fix them. When people grow and get better, performance improves. A growth-oriented leadership style will also ignite passions, supercharge creativity, and enhance the feelings of ownership your staff have. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, Growing people through trusting them is a better way to lead. Great leaders grow people, and nothing grows people better or faster than an extension of trust. There's nothing soft about this idea. When people grow and get better, performance improves. End quote. When you trust your people as a leader, most people will rise to the occasion and perform better. They will go above and beyond to reciprocate your expressions of trust. You'll find your people will be motivated to develop new capabilities on their own initiative. They will feel inclined to return the trust, creating a self-driving upward cycle of more trust and confidence. They will become inspired to be better than before. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, We need more trust in our world, not less. We need to be more trusting, not less. We need more trust and inspire leaders, not fewer. And while it takes two or more people to have trust, it only takes one to start, someone who is willing to lead in trusting others. End quote. Bill McDermott, CEO of ServiceNow, said, quote, Go for more trust, because trust is the ultimate human currency. End quote. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, To be trusted is the most inspiring form of human motivation. It brings out the best in us all. End quote. Tony Morrison said, quote, Just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free someone else. If you have power, then your job is to empower somebody else. End quote. Three Stewardships of Trust and Inspire. Three, Inspiring. Simon Sinek, author, said, quote, Great leaders are able to inspire people to act. Those who are able to inspire, give people a sense of purpose or belonging, are able to create a following of people who act, not because they are swayed, but because they were inspired. End quote. Your job as a leader is not to just keep people around. You need to lead people in a way so they can thrive and contribute in a meaningful way. In other words, you need people to consciously and deliberately choose to stay. Research shows quite conclusively that's most likely to happen when your people feel inspired. Great leaders have the ability to inspire on an ongoing basis. Jack Zenger and Joe Folkman, researchers, said, quote, we're not suggesting that there is a single silver bullet for leadership, but the ability of leaders to inspire those around them comes the closest to being that all-powerful solution. We simply cannot overemphasize how robust and dominant it is. End quote. So, how do you inspire? The key is to connect your people to your organization's purpose or why. There are really three levels of connections required to inspire. 1. Ourselves. 
you have to connect to your own purpose first. When you know your why, you can be authentic about what matters most. 2. Our relationships. You have to elevate caring over competing. The simple dynamic is when you feel that others are interested in what is important to you, you want to respond with caring. People are looking for empathy and compassion from their leaders. 3. Our team. You have to make people feel like they belong. After all, belonging is what turns a group of individuals into a coherent team. When people feel like they are a part of something bigger than themselves, they will become energized and inspired to contribute in meaningful ways. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, Always look in the mirror and start with yourself first. Work from the inside out. Find your own why. Then get good at building relationships with people and caring about their lives. Then help teams gain a sense of belonging. Finally, connect people with why the work they do matters. We need leaders who inspire. It's your job, and you can get good at this. Inspiring others is a learnable skill. End quote. Amy Wizernuski, professor at Yale, said, quote, Whatever you do, whether you're a janitor or the CEO, you can continually look at what you do and ask how it connects to other people, how it connects to the bigger picture, how it can be an expression of your deepest values. End quote. One of the best tools trust and inspire leaders can use to clarify expectations and encourage accountability are stewardship agreements. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, The process of a stewardship agreement is to get results in a way that grows people. The basic idea is that a stewardship agreement shifts the paradigm of the interaction from vertical positioning to horizontal partnering. From hovering over and checking up on people to self-supervision and accountability. From micromanagement to self-governance. From top-down posturing to becoming partners in success. From leaders judging others to people judging themselves. In short, it shifts the paradigm from manager to coach. End quote. Stewardship agreements are particularly well-suited to remote and hybrid workers and to the new way of working. They create a common understanding of your highest priorities. A good stewardship agreement will typically have at least five key elements. One, you clarify what specifically are your desired results and why those results are important. Two, you set out any guidelines and boundaries the team are expected to follow. Three, you specify what resources will be provided to work with. Four, you then discuss accountability, specifically how everyone will know how they're doing. Five, you also detail the consequences and implications of not achieving the desired results. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, A stewardship agreement can be a powerful tool for overcoming the common barriers to becoming a trust and inspire leader. It can provide great clarity and serves as a safe way to overcome fears and what-if scenarios. It provides a path for you to become part of the solution, to be a programmer, to balance risk, and to build on the strengths of those around you. End quote. Eric Wellmanmeyer said, quote, What's within you is stronger than what's in your way. I think everybody has a yearning for greatness inside of them. End quote. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, quote, Everyone has the power for greatness, not for fame, but greatness, because greatness is determined by service. End quote. This is a summary of Trust and Inspire, Part 3 of 4, Overcoming the Five Barriers. To succeed in becoming a Trust and Inspire leader, there are five generic, pretty much universal roadblocks you'll have to overcome. 1. Won't work here. 2. But what if... Dot, dot, dot. 3. How do I let go? 4. I'm the smartest... Dot, dot, dot. 5. This is who I am. 1. Won't work here. When people say being a trust and inspire leader sounds good in theory, but it won't work here, the solution 
is to first model being that kind of leader yourself and then start mentoring others, creating a ripple effect. When you model the trust and inspire way of leading, irrespective of how anyone else acts, you show the problem is not out there beyond reach. You become the solution to the problem and provide definitive proof change can and will happen as people choose to act differently. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, You change the culture by changing yourself, and then by changing your team, and then by influencing the other teams with which your team interacts. If you can do this, and you can, then another person can too, and then another, and another. People will see you. Your performance and track record will speak for themselves. You will have built enduring influence from the inside out. End quote. Once you've successfully modeled trust and inspire, you can then become a mentor. You can provide personal help to others on how to do it. This is changing your culture from the inside out, which is good. Oprah Winfrey said, quote, I think mentors are important, and I don't think anybody makes it in the world without some form of mentorship. Nobody makes it alone. Nobody has made it alone, and we're all mentors to people even when we don't know it. End quote. In most organizations, people think everyone else is the problem, or systems and strategies and structures may pit employees against each other. Or people may think we didn't cause the problem, so it's someone else's job to fix it. This is living with a victim mentality, which is epitomized by this won't work here thinking. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, Systems and structures are programs. People are the programmers. At the end of the day, systems and structures are really the arms and legs of style, and style flows from paradigm, from our fundamental beliefs. If we embrace or even change our beliefs about people and leadership to those of trust and inspire, and if we help those around us do the same, our style, our actions, and eventually our systems and structures can change too. When the paradigms of the leaders change, the leaders write different programs. End quote. Arthur Ashe, tennis champion, said, quote, Start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. End quote. The five common barriers. Barrier two. But what if I lose control? It doesn't work out. It crashes and burns. I don't get credit for driving change. I'm not as confident as you think I am. Fears naturally crop up when you make a difficult decision to try something new. There are always a number of questions you can ask about a potential worst-case scenario. But the reality is there are things you can do to offset any and all fears. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, Trust is the antidote to fear. Great leaders not only extend trust to others, they also help others gain trust and confidence in themselves. The resulting self-trust can be greater than their fears. End quote. Instead of endlessly asking, what if this goes wrong, or what if this happens? Ask the better question. What if this does work? What then? Generate enough self-belief that it offsets any fears. You can also extend smart trust, work to balance risk and returns, and do things that build credibility. If you have an abundance mindset and believe that most people can and should be trusted, everything will work out fine. Henry Ruiz, CEO of Advanced Nanotechnology Solutions, said, quote, The right people will feel far more pressure to perform well when they are trusted. End quote. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, The retailer Nordstrom has created a high-trust culture that at the same time is characterized by strong control. But it's a different type of control. The Nordstrom Employee Handbook, for example, is short and simple. It might not even be considered a handbook. It's a single card that states, Welcome to Nordstrom. We're glad to have you with our company. We have only one rule. Use good judgment in all situations. There will be no additional rules. End quote. The five barriers. Barrier three. How do I let go? Ceding control, also known as 
letting go of the steering wheel, is hard. Sometimes it can feel pretty much impossible. However, the reality is an inability to let go can be damaging to morale and stifling for creativity. So, what's the solution? You have to view initial failures as learning experiences along the pathway to growth and future innovation. Trust and inspire leaders have a high tolerance for failure leading to learning. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, Trust and inspire leaders also know that appropriately trusting others is crucial to engaging them, inspiring them, and earning their buy-in. It's also vital to others' own growth and development. We should always remember that people have greatness inside them and that the power is in the seed, knowing that people have untapped potential. We should create an environment where people can experiment and try to gain their own experience, even if that means failing. We can't do this without letting go. The gardener can't pull the seed up through the soil. The seed has to sprout and break through on its own. End quote. With command and control, failure was viewed as bad, avoid at all costs. Trust and inspire suggests failure is growth and should be celebrated, not swept under the rug. Trust and empower your people to serve customers well, and if they get it wrong once or twice, learn from it and move on. Embrace failure as the price to pay to learn, and your people will thrive. The Five Barriers Four. I'm the smartest, dot, dot, dot. Whenever a leader sits there thinking, I'm the smartest person in the room, you have a problem. They won't listen to the good ideas of others, which can be demoralizing. Trust and inspire leaders don't think this way because they are multipliers who readily acknowledge they're better when they draw on the strengths of the people around them. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, the solution and mindset to overcome the smartest one-in-the-room syndrome starts with believing that there is enough for everyone and with understanding the importance of elevating caring above competing. End quote. A good process for avoiding this barrier is 1. Leaders should always start with humility, with acknowledging other people can have great ideas as well. Good leaders are humble and confident enough to let others put forward their ideas. You have to leave your Superman or Superwoman cape at the door to trust and inspire. 2. Always listen first and demonstrate respect for the ideas and opinions of others. Listen with the intent to really understand rather than using listening time to think about what you want to say next. Listen and learn. 3. Always embrace a growth mindset that there is opportunity to grow the pie and share the spoils. Believe and act like you believe that there is greatness in your people, and it's your job to unlock that. Establish a meritocracy for great ideas. Ken Blanchard, author, said, quote, None of us is as smart as all of us. End quote. Liz Wiseman, author, said, quote, The person sitting at the apex of the intelligence hierarchy is the genius maker, not the genius. End quote. Five common barriers. Five. This is who I am. Sometimes, leaders face tough situations and think, well, this is just the way I am. What else can I do? It is what it is. Habit is a very strong force, and leaders who are heavily vested in command and control may believe it's that style which has got them where they are today. That's incorrect. Trust and inspire leaders know they can re-script their futures. They realize that they are the programmers, not the programs. Peter Senge, author, said, quote, Through learning, we recreate ourselves. Through learning, we become able to do something we were never able to do. Through learning, we re-perceive the world and our relationship to it. End quote. The reality is, how you operated in the past doesn't control or dictate who you can become in the future or even how you will act in the future. You can create your own future and reprogram your path by changing and upgrading your approach. 
As Albert Einstein noted, imagination is more important than knowledge. The perfect example of this was Andy Pearson. During the 15 years he was CEO of PepsiCo, he was named by Fortune magazine as one of the 10 toughest bosses in American business. Pearson retired and then taught at Harvard Business School for 10 years before being lured out of retirement to become chairman of Yum! Brands. At Yum!, Pearson chose to dramatically re-script himself as a trust-and-inspire-style leader. He created an impressive culture of recognition and collaboration at Yum! That saw the company grow and prosper very impressively. Andy Pearson himself noted this was a much better way to lead. He later commented, You say to yourself, if I could only unleash the power of everybody in the organization instead of just a few people, what could we accomplish? We'd be a much better company. At Yum, Pearson tapped into the potential of his people by changing how he led. This is a summary of Trust and Inspire, Part 4 of 4, The New Way to Lead. To become a trust and inspire leader, become a trust and inspire person first. Recognize there is greatness in the people around you and trust them to deliver great results. Trust and inspire is not only a better way to lead, it's also a better way to live. The great thing about trust and inspire is you can use it everywhere, as a parent, as a teacher, as a coach, and in pretty much every other setting. This approach will work well in the various roles you fill in your life and career. Dr. Francis Fritt, author and professor, said, quote, The most important decision we all make, how to remove barriers to people's unique capabilities. End quote. The fundamental beliefs that underpin the trust and inspire leadership style apply everywhere. People have greatness inside them, so my job as leader is to help unleash their potential, not control them or dictate to them. People are whole people, so my job as a leader is to inspire, not merely to motivate and exhort. An abundance mindset suggests there is enough and more for everyone, and therefore my job as a leader is to elevate caring above competing. Leadership is always a stewardship, so my job as a leader is to put service above self-interest. Enduring influence is always created from the inside out, so my job as leader is to go first and model success. Trust and inspire leaders always model great behavior, trust their teams and processes, and inspire themselves and others by connecting with people and a purpose. Stephen M. R. Covey said, quote, we can all do great things. The world is a better and more noble place when filled with trust and inspire people and leaders. Amazing feats and equally amazing leadership are made possible through modeling, trusting, and inspiring. Wherever there is greatness, wherever there is achievement, wherever there is success, you can find a trust and inspire leader. People aren't moved to greatness. They are inspired to it. There is always a model, someone who paved the way. There is always someone who trusted and believed in others. And there is always someone who inspired, who was able to light the fire within, not only within themselves, but within others. End quote. Wilma Rudolph, Olympic champion, said, quote, The potential for greatness lives within each of us. End quote. Leo Tolstoy said, quote, Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. End quote. Robert Frost said, quote, I am not a teacher, but an awakener. End quote. Nelson Mandela said, quote, To plant a seed, watch it grow, to tend to it and then harvest it, offers a simple but enduring satisfaction. The sense of being the custodian of this small patch of earth offered a small taste of freedom. In some ways, I saw the garden as a metaphor for certain aspects of my life. A leader must also tend his garden. He, too, plants seeds and then watches, cultivates, and harvests the result. End quote. Galileo said, quote, You can never teach a person anything. 
you can only help him find it within himself. End quote. Tim Cook, CEO at Apple, said, quote, I want to be the pebble in the pond that creates the ripple for change. End quote. <sighs> Bill Walsh, former coach of the San Francisco 49ers, said, quote, The four most powerful words are, I believe in you. End quote. Stephen M. R. Covey then finally said, quote, When we model, people will think, I want to be like that person. When we trust, people will think, I want to deliver for that person. And when we inspire, people will think, I want to contribute with that person. We can be that leader. We should be that leader. Our colleagues need it. Our organizations need it. Our family and friends need it. Our communities need it. Our society and world need it. And, as we become the leader we strive to be, we will find that life is made all the better for it. This indeed is the new way to lead and a better way to live, trust, and inspire. End quote. This has been a summary of Trust and Inspire, How Truly Great Leaders Unleash Greatness in Others, written by Stephen M. R. Covey. <laughs>